so I what I want to show in this video is how do we do manual detailing so imagine if uh, so I have a column over here and a beam uh, approaching it and I wanted a haunch connection over here let's say and normally obviously since I have the beam to column haunch macro I can just use that but let's say I don't have that macro and I want to do the detailing manually myself now in that case what I would do is I would go to the view menu and I would go to the view by two points and I would create a view for myself. And the moment I do that, I am looking at the at the elements from this side. A good practice is to immediately press the SWE button so that my work plane comes um, to this view and my, I know where my X and Y axes are. I can zoom in a bit and now I can start um, creating my plates. So there'll be an end plate over here, I know, for the haunch. It's going to extend, say, whatever, some amount uh, to the downside. And it's probably going to extend a bit to the upside as well. So I can go to my steel menu and I can look for my sectional plate command over here. I can press that and it asks me to select a plate. But I don't want to do that, so I'll right click. I'll just select two points. And I want to select this point over here. and this point over here and then immediately a sectional plate is created let me right click twice to get out of the command now I can select this plate and press Control W to get it to the alignment which I want and then I can double click on it and a dialog box opens up this is the end extension and this is the start extension so on the start I want an extension of minus 100 maybe I want to put put a bolt up here and at the end, which is this point, I want an extension of minus, uh, let's call it 350, right? And okay, so immediately the sectional plate command gives me an extension upwards of 100 millimeters and downwards of 350 millimeters. The next thing I want to do is I want to pull back this beam so that it finishes at this point. So I can just measure uh, what this distance is from here to here and it's the next distance of 165 millimeters so what I can do is I can just double click on it this is the end point so I can say uh, minus 165 at that point and press OK and the beam is pulled back now I want my flange plate which is an inclined plate something like this and I want the flange plate to start at about 30 millimeters above this point somewhere over here and go in an inclined way to somewhere over here which the definition of this point would be say 500 millimeters from this point so i can go back to my sectional plate command again and right click because i want to select points and i can hover over this point and using direct entry method i can just say dy 30 millimeters 30 and the first point is selected without without having the need to actually create the point and for the second point, which is somewhere over here, I need to hover over this point and press enter again and say dx this time and say 500. And I press enter and immediately my sectional plate is created. I can right click twice to get out of the command. I can select this plate and press control W shortcut to get the alignment which I want. And now I'm ready to enter my contour plate, which is a triangular plate over here. So for these two plates, I use the sectional plate command, but for the triangular plate, I will simply use the contour plate command over here. So I just go like that, like that, and back. The plate's been created. We don't see it because of the mode we are in, so I can just change my draw mode to the solid draw mode, and I can now see the plates. Uh, they're all created in the, in the center of the view, so they're, they're perfectly aligned right now. What about the depths of these two plates? How much are they going in, in, the, in, the, in the Z direction right now? Uh, so I know I want this plate and this plate to maybe be the same as the beam's flange, for example. So let me double click on the beam's flange and see that the width of the flange is 150. So what I can do is I can, um, so for example, if I double click on that, I can make this variable 150. And now I know that this plate, the depth of this plate is 150, and I can do the same for this one. I could have done a multiple selection and done both of them at the same time. Uh, now I want to have three chamfers over here for this triangular web plate. So what I do is I just select it and I say show only, 
and I press the Alt key and I do a window selection so I can select all the chamfers. Press Enter and go to the appropriate chamfer type and give a number. Press Apply and my chamfer is done. I can show right, say right click and say Show All once again and my uh, the rest of the elements are on the screen once more. I now need the bolts at the end of over here. So let me go to the sectional bolt command over here. The normal bolt command would be used if you were looking at it, uh, looking at this from the front facing it. But since I'm already in the sectional view, I'll prefer to use the sectional bolt command. And the bolt is between this plate and the column. So I select the two, right click, and now it asks me for the origin of the bolt um, coordinate system, which is over here. I just I, I can have it anywhere I want, but let me just keep it over here. And then it asks me for a, for, a, for an X direction. So I give it this direction. Immediately it creates the bolts, but because the settings of the bolts are not appropriate right now, it's just created the, created the bolts in a dummy way. So I'll double click on the bolts, go to my positions. Uh, the Y positions, I know this is the X direction, but we talk, the problem was in the Y direction. So the Y positions need to be minus 30 and 60, minus 30 being the absolute coordinate and 60 being the relative one. And for the X one, let's uh, say, because I know the origin is over here and I want my first bolt to be over here. So I can say minus 50 and then 100. So let me, let's see where that gets me. That gets me something like this. This is, this is, this first bolt at the top is minus 50 and the second one is 100 millimeters from there. And then after that, I can just say, maybe 3 into 60 and see where that takes me. Okay, that's perfect. I can then jump 130, see where that takes me, and then do another maybe 2 into 75, right, to get my remaining bolts. And I can press cancel to get out of it. If I wanted to change the diameter, I could just go to the settings section and change my diameter and assembly settings from here. But I don't want to do that. Let's just rotate the view a bit and see what we've achieved. Okay, there we go. We can, we can see that these sectional plates are exactly the width of the beam over here, which was 150, as is this end plate. And with a few clicks, I have managed to uh, create my punch connection. Now I want to just create a little stiffener plate over here as well. So what I can do is I can start creating a contour plate. I can go like that, I can go like that. And now I can hover over this point and say um, something like DX100 uh, maybe, right? And then I can just come down to this point because the perpendicular snap is there and I can finish it off. My plate is ready. I can um, press the Alt key press enter for the chamfer. If I had the handles on, I could have done it through the handles as well. Uh, so I can just go in there and say maybe 25, 25, that's it. And now my corner plate is also, the thickness is a bit too much for my liking. I'll convert that into 12 millimeters. And now I'm satisfied with it. I can go ahead to make the wells also. So maybe I don't like the distance between the bolts over here. Maybe it's a bit too small. So I can double click on them and I can, instead of giving it minus 30 to 60, I can convert that into minus 40 to 80. So it's a bit more opened up, right? I need a chamfer over at this point as well. Let me turn on the chamfers. Now I can select this one and give it a chamfer using the handles this time so that it's easier and there we go once again i can press the zero button over here to see it from the side and i'm satisfied with that all that le that's left over here is to create the wells and that's pretty easy as well all you need to do is just you go to the weld command you select an edge and then you select the plate you want to weld it to and your weld has been created so i won't go through all the wells but this one has been created it's at the moment it is only on that side. So all you need to do is just say, double click on that and instead of edge, choose all around. That's it. And now it's going all around. 
So with a few simple steps, we've managed to create a haunch connection without the need of having a haunch macro. And the next thing we can do is we can easily put this in the form of a user-defined macro. And then whenever a similar situation occurs, we can use this macro. So the purpose was to be able to do manual detailing. In steel structures, you will do most of the job using the available macros. That's, that's a given. But in any complicated job, there will be some detailing left where you will be forced to do manual detailing. So the purpose of this video was to show you how manual detailing is done. And I hope that's been useful. Mm -hmm.